Whether teaching his children to beat the African drums or cooking an Indian meal with his wife Anita, Chandradat Singh exudes an enthusiasm for life that can only come from a man who is secure of his place in the world around him. Life must be not totally informal but not too structured. I think man must must develop with an ease, a sense of ease, a kind of relaxed air about him. That's the way you attract people around you, and that's the way you tolerate people best, in that kind of informal air and atmosphere. I don't mean that one should be totally informal and be careless, but I, and I don't think one should be too formal and try to be too, too strict about one's own religion and one's own personality and one's own way of life. I do not feel that man should feel threatened Every time somebody says or does something that he feels is not, in conf not conforming with his own belief and his own practices. I don't think one should be thin-skinned about one one's own cultural development and tradition which is very dear to you. I think given time, you can make people see your way and make people tolerate your thing. But I think to fight, to say, look, that's not my thing, you know, you're violating my religion, that's not my principle, that's not my kind of music, and to fight, it's a mistake. People do things because they don't know sufficiently of your own thing. And I think, um, I believe and I practice this philosophy that when people say things to me or they do things to me that do not exactly fit into what I believe in, I'm not offended. If I have an opportunity, I will try to let them see my way of life. If I get a chance, I'll make them feel it as I do through my instruments. And it has always happened that I have people who've been standoffish in the beginning when we meet, and people who've had different impressions of who I am and what I am have become great friends of mine afterwards because of my giving in, because of my saying in most cases, it doesn't matter if, you, if you, that's what you feel about me or my religion or my way of life or my country. But I know in the end of the day, when I make you feel what it's all about, you're going to be different, and that's always worked for me. And he is attempting to transfer his knowledge of how tolerance and understanding can be achieved in a multiracial Trinidad and Tobago by promoting an appreciation of the various cultures that exist here. We are at a very interesting stage of our cultural development. On the one hand, you find that today people in Trinidad and Tobago know more of each other's culture than we have ever known in the past. Nothing is really a mystery or mystique anymore for Trinidad and Tobago people of each other's culture, whether it's instruments or song or dance or music or whatever. At the same time, we find that there has never been in our history a more, more enthusiasm for each individual group, each ethnic group, going back to find its root and trying to identify with its, its, its own heritage. That can have several effects. One is that it can make us a more proud people because a man is at any point in, 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 in his life the, total, the totality of what his expressions are here. You know, culture really expresses the totality of your own individual personality. And uh, so the more the individual knows about himself and his background and his heritage, the more fulfilled he can be and the more total he can be to contribute towards a society. That might pose some problems as well. How do you deal with people in a society getting so individualistic, if that happens, getting so caught up in their own individual world, cultural world, that there's not too much of meeting out there. So we have that kind of situation in the country where people are very conscious of the past and are getting more and more involved with their heritage and their history. And we have a, a need out there, because we are so closely knitted together in the society, for the coming together of all these cultural experiences. We have to find a way of making that work without making people feel that they are threatened, that they have to give up one thing for the other, and that they have to come, you know, and make some compromise in an effort to forge ahead as, as one nation, one people, and one culture. We have to define what we think Trinidad and Tobago's culture is going to be to include all of that experience, 
If we do that, we are going on the right track. If we're going to say the Trinidad and Tobago's culture is X, Y, and Z, and that you know, the others can have to fit in somehow, you have to change the format and change the form, then we are going to have a difficult task ahead of us. But if we say Trinidad and Tobago's culture is all that we are, let us make it work for us. By being creative and innovative, we can find ways of expressing ourselves without having to change the format or change the form of our cultural expressions and yet present them in different ways that will become palatable to the rest of the society and that will become attractive to the rest of the society. I think uh, there is no need or there is no, there, is no, there is no point saying this is my thing, you either take it or leave it. We, we can't afford that in a society like Trinidad and Tobago. We have to be able to find a way to make you and, and the other person and everybody else understand our own cultural expressions by the way we present it to them. And he's optimistic that it can happen. Indeed, he says, it is already taking place. It is impossible for us to live so close together in one country and not have that kind of common cultural expression coming out, that new format, that new means of expressing ourselves. That will be called Trinidad and Tobago. That will be influenced and dictated by the environment of Trinidad and Tobago. So once that happens, our problems are, you know, are taken care of. We don't have to really go out there and say, look, you've got to do this this way. This is not Trinidad and Tobago. This resembles something else. Give the people a chance. Provide the right environment for them. Provide the right kind of incentive for them. And they will continue to express themselves. And more and more, it's going to be expressions of the environment of Trinidad and Tobago. And show in the future what we will see will be very different from what we have today. A lot is happening. you find now with more, more, more composers and choreographers among us, for example, you have a lot of, of new expressions coming into being. You have the, the songwriters digging deep into the, the mosaic of our society and creating songs, using everybody's instruments and everybody's um, song and dance and whatnot. That never happened so much in the past because we didn't have people who were competent to do that, enough people. And as this develops, this kind of competence and the ability of, by people to read and write and compose and create, you're going to find that more and more of this common cultural expression is going to come to be. And uh, we'll find names for them, like Soka or like whatever you want to call it, but it's going to belong to us. And I feel that that's not something that we don't have to be too worried about. If Chandradat Singh is not worried about the future cultural development of Trinidad and Tobago, it is because it is this country which has produced such a unique individual. Here is a man who has held firmly and proudly to his traditional settings, and yet at the same time has been able to venture boldly and confidently into the musical and cultural realms of others. A Trinidadian? Yes, but more than that. He is a man whose love for music has transcended all barriers and made him truly a citizen of the world.